Hey you guys, hey you guys, hello Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, we're live again, this is day 6 of the 55 days to breakthrough and um, well it's getting into a habit to uh, do a live and uh, I feel a lot better um, thanks to a wonderful, wonderful person in my life and her name is Rebecca Steele and I'm gonna leave her name in the comments because you need to get in touch with her. Uh, she did an amazing thing, she's on the other side of the world, um, as you know I'm in the Netherlands and she is, I don't even know, Australia, New Zealand um, and she did something uh, while I was asleep and uh, she raised the frequency and she did some healing exercises on me and I feel a lot better. So I still have the cold, I still have the cough, but it's getting a lot better. Um, and I still have a snotty nose, but it's all coming out now. So that's best when it's all out, right? So it's releasing and that feels really good. So a huge shout out to Rebecca uh, because she felt uh, she had to do something, uh, she had seen one of my videos and she said, you know, I am with you on empowering women and um, and that's why she did this. And, and I think that's just amazing and I was so blessed and happy that she did this. And that's why I want to give her a huge shout out because women, um, we need a Rebecca in our lives, we really do. So, um, so that's uh, about Rebecca. Now let's talk about another thing that I dis uh, discovered this week, that um, many of us, many of us are looking for a breakthrough and perhaps not like a major breakthrough, but to be like effortlessly successful, to really be in our flow and to stop the fight and the struggle and trying all kinds of things that don't work for us. And um, I think the thing is, do we do what really lights us up? Do we do what really gives us joy and pleasure? Um, and especially when we look at generators and manifesting generators in human design, what we need to do is follow our joy we need to follow our joy because if we're we're chasing success it's not gonna work and that may sound really weird and yesterday during um, a human design mastermind call we discussed this that um, it sounds really counterintuitive for manifesting generators and generators to follow their joy but it is, it is the way to go. Um, and for many of us, we are so conditioned to be up in our heads, you know, to look at the rational side of things and to make decisions with the head. And if there's something that human design is about, it's about trusting your body when it comes to making a good decision. So, um, that's always a challenge for a lot of people. So it takes a lot of deconditioning. So we're all up in our heads. Um, but another thing that I discovered was when I was talking to people and they were telling me like, okay, this is where I'm at with my business. I know I have to make some choices. I know I have to uh, take some action. I don't really know what, I don't really know how, etc. So. Tomorrow I'm going to share something else about that, but that's going to leave you for tomorrow. Um, but the thing is that what it is that you really want doing has already left some cues in the past. So it could be that like, so yesterday I spoke to Jenny um, and she told me that 20 years ago she already got a brochure for a coaching training and she didn't take it at the time because she thought like, oh, everyone else would think it's weird, but I love it. 
And that's what I really want you to think of today when you think of the things that you are, like you, you're craving success, right? You're craving new clients, really dream clients that you want to work with. And what I really want you to do is to tap into the feeling of what is it that I really, really, really want to do? What is your heart's desire? And the way to get there, and there's no just, you know, do this and then you will know your heart's desire. That's not how it works. Um, but it's looking um, in the past. What kind of cues did you get in the past? What kind of courses did you look at? What did you want to be when you were a kid? Uh, what did you like doing when you were a kid? And there are so many cues that you can get from that time. Um, what did you like to do when you were in middle school or in high school or university? Or what were you thinking about? What, what did you feel? Because especially as youngsters and kids we are so connected to our intuition and our gut feeling that we haven't totally been conditioned at that age to only listen to what's going on in our heads um, but it turns out that what your heart's desire is it has left some cues already in the past and now there's no need to beat yourself up over the fact that you didn't do it then uh, because apparently you weren't ready for the idea, for the concept, for whatever. Um, but I think it's really important that you tap into that feeling. Of, oh, what is my, what is my dream? What is it? If money was no uh, issue, what would I love doing? If I would close my eyes and I could just, you know, um, uh, transport myself to my happy place doing what I love, not having to worry about anything. What is it that you would be doing? And that's what I want you to think about. Think about it. It's not like, oh, you need to act on it, but it leaves some cues on what it is that you really love to do. So let's tap into that feeling uh, together. So I'll give you an example. One of the things that I wanted to be uh, when I was young, uh, I wanted to be a purser. Uh, for an airline. My very first job was for an airline. Uh, I worked for Air France. Um, when I was 19, I worked for Air France to, for two years. However, I was not on the plane. I was at the reservations office in Amsterdam. Um, but my dream was to work internationally to travel the world and connect with other people and other cultures and to find like the common denominator that connects us. That was my dream when I was, I don't know, eight, nine, ten. Um, and, and that's a thing that has always been with me because whenever, whatever job I had in the past, it has always been international. I've always worked with other countries, other cultures. Um, and I love that. I love that. I, I, I can, I see myself not as a Dutch person because I am Dutch. I'm very Dutch. I've always lived in the Netherlands, but I'm a global citizen because I think we are all connected all over the world. We are all connected and, and we're all the same. Um, so we all have our dreams, our desires, and, um, and, and that's what I love about working with people is to reconnect them to the dream and reconnect them to their own power and reconnect them, uh, to the belief in themselves. Because I think we all had that belief when we were young and, um, and that's, that's the thing that I love doing. And yeah so that's what i do so when people work with me what they get is clarity confidence and a plan that's what they get whether it's like four weeks in my kitchen table mastermind or it's six months in my coaching um that's what they get clarity confidence and a plan 
and and I absolutely love doing that with uh, with people. So um, so yeah, here's what I want you to do: is really tap into the things that you wanted when you were younger, the cues that you got. So you can really tap into that, into that heart's desire, and then start moving forward from there. And I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear a comment, uh, what it is that, what's your heart's desire? I really want to know. So let's talk about it and see how we can make it happen. And um, yeah, I really look forward to that. So um, it's already 11 minutes. Oh my goodness. It's the longest of the entire week so far. And I think it's a very important topic because I spoke so much to so many people this week who were kind of lost uh, in that in that particular area. So let's dive into the heart's desire and I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you guys tomorrow.